All right, this is the second part of lesson one. We're going to jump into year unit and lesson planning in ELA. And I'm going to show you some of the documents that go along with this particular, with this particular planning. So basically the goal for today that I want in this particular, in sharing this, this particular information with you is to start the journey of constructing plans from macro, macro, to micro with knowledge of the intricacies of elementary literacy and language so that you can be an amazing and inspiring LA teacher, right? Well, I want you to start this journey because when um, you will refine your planning abilities over the next 10 weeks, over the next 10 years, over the next 20 years, every teacher plans and every teacher refines their planning as they go through their career. So uh, don't panic if this seems overwhelming. The more that you work with these these ideas of planning in the actual documents of planning, um, it will not take you long to figure out to figure out what you need to be doing to really create amazing macro to micro plans. Okay, so again, what if we had just gone to Cyprus without doing backwards design thinking beforehand or connecting to program goals? You know, we probably would have had a lot of fun out there, but we would not have um, focused on any particular learning, which is ultimately our job. That is our job as teachers is to focus on some particular learning so that our students have a well-rounded education by the time they finish grade 12. Okay. But you might be going, but how do you begin to plan for ELA? So over the next few few classes, you're we're going to be looking at planning for um oh, oh sorry, over in all of your classes, you're going to be start to be look, looking at planning for all sorts of different subjects. So I am going to focus on year planning or that really long range macro planning because once you figure out how to create a year plan in English language arts, you can create this, you can do the same thing. You can just replicate for math, for science, for social studies. So that will be my, my focus. Loralee and Jason will be focusing on unit planning. So you'll see that in ELA, we don't do a lot of unit planning. That doesn't mean that you that you won't do unit planning when you get out there as a teacher. It just means that we, we are trying to streamline because the same thing, the unit plan concepts that you will develop with Loralee and Jason apply to ELA as well. And then all of us will dive into particular lesson planning because there are some particulars that will go with our with with the subject area. So as you already know, the the Alberta program of studies, the new K to six programs are the basis. They're the foundation of all of your all of your planning for ELA. I am going to use the new K to six programs all the way through, even though K to three is mandated for fall of 2022. So right now and four to six is mandated for 2023. However, by the time you graduate, it will be fully mandated. So I'm going to focus on the new program of studies. So uh, don't worry too much about the ex the old one because we won't be utilizing it. I'll, I'm going to show it to you so you, you learn how to navigate through it, but we'll be focusing on this particular uh, this particular program of studies. Okay, so basically you're planning. What's the purpose of your planning? What are the considerations and what is what is the content? So the purpose of your planning is it gives you a total sense of direction. Once you have your whole year plan figured out, you can, I, I kind of just go, oh, thank goodness. I kind of know what I'm doing in October, December, February. Does that mean that I'm locked in? No, absolutely not. But it's a little, it just is a little bit of that overarching planning that then I know that I don't, okay, how many of you had a teacher at one point that spent, you know, especially in like high school, spent four out of five months on one unit and then crammed in three units in two and a half weeks? That's because there, there wasn't a lot of long range planning and uh, and going, okay, I need to move on from this unit uh, so that I don't cram a whole bunch of information in at the very end. Okay. Basically, uh, so sense of direction. 
you want, you also will know when you create a year plan that you have actually fulfilled all the objectives. Will you actually in reality be able to teach every single objective every single year? No, but your job as a teacher is to aim to do that. Then you have to take into consideration your, you know, your students, where they're at, your school, all of those, all of those other things that, that come into play. And some of your principals will require, I used to hand, I handed in your plans to my principal every end of, end of, end of September. And he, he and she would look, would look at my year plans and say, okay, yeah, looks, looks good. You have a plan for what's going on. Some principals will never ask for your plans, but again, it's a great long range strategy for you to really be organized at considerations when you're doing your year plan. And I know that that when you're starting out, you may not know all of these things, but consider these student ability and level. So if you have a class that is way above grade level, most of them are way above grade level, you may do different things than if you have a class that has a lot of struggling readers, right? So student ability, authentic experiences as readers and writers. So just doing like another whole unit and not, you know, this is the sixth unit and I'm just giving them the booklet and they're just filling out the questions. That's not an authentic experience as readers and writers. So really go for those. What is it? What does it really mean to be a reader and writer and then find those experiences? Bringing your interests and expertise. If you are Rod DeVries, the sky science guy, you better be doing and have that much passion and that much knowledge about sky science. You better be teaching a unit on Greek mythology, right? Because as soon as you get excited about the content, the kids are going to go there with you, right? So bring in your own interests and expertise. Teaching English language arts, there's a lot of room, a lot of room for a lot of cool things, which at the beginning makes it a little scary, but also makes it super exciting to teach. Um, think about authentic interdisciplinary activities. So, you know, some community classroom experiences, some experiential learning experiences. And of course you have to, you have to be focusing on the Alberta program of program of studies in there. Okay, content, what should be included on a year plan document? Well, let's, you know what, let's have a look, see if I can do this. Let's have a look at an actual, this, these are all, I'm just gonna show you here. These are all on your Blackboard under course lessons, lesson one. Let's actually look at a year plan exemplar. Okay, so this is, I have permission from our lovely uh, group members to show this to you. I'm just gonna go pull this a little bit here. Okay, this is based on the old program of studies, but it's the same concept. It's the same concept. And I'll show you the template that I want you to use. So basically what you're going to do is write out all for you guys, the skills and procedures for your particular grade, you're going to write out the, 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 all of the overarching, like the learning outcomes, the organizing, organizing ideas, and then you're going to write out all the skills and procedures here. Letter them so that you can actually find them. Don't just put them in bullet points. Then what you're going to do is I really liked how they color coordinated it. So they, they said, you know what, my reader's theater, I'm actually going to, I feel that Reader's Theatre can fulfill asking questions, paraphrasing and discussing to explore ideas and understanding new concepts. I also feel that Reader's Theatre can fulfill discussing and comparing the way similar topics are developed in different forms of oral print and other media. So this is what a year plan is. It is not, de it is not detailed about what, what you're actually going to teach. I just know, so if I'm your principal, I know that daily work, you're going to do some daily work. You have some programs, like some maybe pre-made programs that you're going to follow. Then you have some units. You're going to do all about me. You're going to do some components writing. That's not my favorite unit. I actually challenged them on that, that one. I would rather do um, a more interesting writing project, but that was, that, that was okay. Reader's Theater. I love this one. Unit Battle of the Bands, right? So this is what it is. And then you just go through and you figure out which, which for you guys, skills and procedures, correspond with which unit. 
So that's what that is going to look like. Hang on, I'm gonna go back to course lessons. I'm gonna go to lesson one, and I'm going to go to comprehensive template. So you can actually see what our, what the template is that, whoa, it's very big. Okay, I'm going to just reduce it here. Do, do, whoa, that's a little bit too much reduction. Okay, so here, um, make sure that you put in your grade. So if you're teaching grade four, put grade four and put your name. That's why I put question marks there. Make sure that you fill this in. So it's basically the same as what you just saw um, from last year. The only thing is it's just different. You're just going to put in, here's your organizing idea. You need to put in your guiding question. You need to put in your learning outcome and then fill this in. So you'll just add in as many, as many skills and procedures uh, rows as you need. And then, and then fill this in. This will end up being about probably 20 pages, but it's not a lot of writing. It's a lot of just sort of filling in, but a lot of thought goes into it right a lot of thought because ultimately then can we go back to oh where did theirs go what ultimately will happen sorry i should have left this one out is when you go to do your year or your unit plan this is the exciting part when you go to do your unit plan you then sorry this is sorry you techie people who are watching me struggle okay what you're going to do is then when you go to do your readers theater um unit you just go okay my objectives for my year readers theater ah oh, here they are boom boom so these are all my objectives for my unit for my readers theater so basically then you when you go to do the unit plan you've already got all your objectives you have all your outcomes then what you do is then you pull these maybe 10 15 objectives and then those go onto your unit plan and then from your unit plan those objectives go on to your lesson plan. So it is a really amazing process, which really ultimately, um, ultimately serves you when you go to do all of the rest of your planning, all the way down to the, to the macro. Okay, oh, there we go. That's what I was gonna show you. Ultimately, we're realistic enough to know that most teachers don't write out all the skills and procedures you know there there are like 90 to 120 of them what they what you will eventually do is you will be able to look at the skills and procedures and meld them in together so this is again based on the past curriculum but it's the same concept so the general outcome for grade one they this was actually um done by sd76 teachers a few years ago they basically drew that down to grade ones need to talk with others express ideas and group ideas and information and then that would go on their year plan okay why i want you to actually write out or copy all of the skills and procedures is so that you actually see them all eventually you'll start to go oh that one works really well with this one i could actually put those all together and it would all fit under talk with others right now you need to see them as they are in the alberta the learn alberta document but i want you to know that i know ultimately this will be your year plan you will be able to write Grade one, self-correct. They're gonna be, I want them to make predictions. I want them to read aloud with some fluency and accuracy, right? Though that will be what you put on the side for your, actually object, your actual objectives. Also, I want you to, when you are thinking about outcomes, and I want you to, to like these, the verbs that you choose are so, so, so important because that is going to be what, what will form um, how you actually design, how you actually design your lesson plan. Okay. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea about your planning. It's, it sounds huge, but it's kind of exciting. It's like, oh, I could do a unit on Greek mythology. I could do a unit on puppets. I could do a one act play. I could do something that's science based or social studies based. Um, and so it's it's really exciting, but then what you have to do is you have to pull it in and make sure that your unit actually is going to fulfill some objectives. Okay, there we go. That's the romp through your planning.